Hi, welcome to the special show. It's a joint effort uh, between NewsX and Business World magazine. The stimulus package, well, it was worth 20 lakh crores. It's been hailed by a few people. Uh, also, a lot of people say that it has failed to meet the expectations of a lot of people. But what is the main challenge for the government going forth? Will the state have to do more in the months to come? Because frankly, the COVID numbers are increasing day by day. And at the same time, the unlocking of the country has also started. And we're going to discuss what this means uh, for businesses. What does this mean for entrepreneurs? What does this mean for MSMEs uh, with uh, some of the biggest names from the business world? Let me start uh, welcoming them one by one. Uh, Mr. Ashish Kashyap, founder and CEO of In Money, joins us on the panel. Uh, Ashish, happy to have you here. Uh, Mr. Harsh, Mr. Harsh Binani, co-founder of SmartWorks is also here with us. Mr. Binani, pleasure to have you here. Mr. Sudhakar Rao, Director of Branding, I ICFAI Group, is also here with us. Mr. Thank Rama you. Harwa, Group CEO of Havas Group, India, is here with us as well. Uh, Ms. Chandri Sikan, Business Partner and Head of Marketing, uh, Compact LED Lights, is also with us on this wonderful panel today. Dr. Ashwini Sharma, Pro-Chancellor, Vijay Bhumi University, ex-director of uh, the general NIELIT, uh, Government of India. Mr. Arnab Mitra, founder of uh, Liquid Asia, also joins us on this very special show. Last, but by no means the least, uh, Mr. Anurag Batra, chairman and editor-in-chief of uh, Business World and Exchange for Media Group is also with us on the broadcast. All right, uh, Mr. Kashyap, let me begin by asking you a very straightforward and a very simple question. Rate the stimulus package from one to 10. And do you think, and also give us reason uh, as to why are you giving it the number that you will be giving it? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, while the intent is good, but there are obviously challenges with execution, which leads to uh, me rating the stimulus package at about four on 10. I think, okay. you know, I think there, there are, there are some massive challenges, uh, you if know, the is given four out of 10, it's considered a flop. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, uh, it is four on 10. It's still not zero on 10. I, I, I think our barometers would be a little different, uh, out here. Uh, but you know, let me, let me start with the first flaw, the first flaw, which is the moratorium, which has been given for uh, extending the loan timeline, I think is grossly misunderstood on one hand and on, on the other hand, it's usually flawed because in other words, what it is doing is it is increasing the compounding costs of SME sector. A lot of SMEs have gone and topped up on one hand and on the other hand have also taken the moratorium, but just imagine the compounding costs. And I, and I think, you know, once things start to open up, you know, once uh, things become clearer, this is going to be very, very difficult on the economics of these SMEs or MSMEs mm -hmm. to cope with. So I think that's one of the big challenges. Right. The second challenge, if you see that today's date, the tourism, travel, entertainment industry contribute mm -hmm. to almost 12 million working population. And there is nothing which has been done for this particular category, uh, which I think is a pretty, uh, a pretty difficult situation in my view. Mm. The third, which I would think is not directly related to the stimulus package, mm. but I feel that rather than direct deposit of money into the accounts, there should have been more work which, has, which should have been done for the industries. So just imagine a migrant worker has now got X rupees in his account hmm. and that migrant worker now goes back to his village. He's obviously leveraging that amount to, for his food, water, shelter. And now he'll only come back after Diwali or in November to start joining the MSME industry which I think is going to be very, very challenging because on one hand, MSME industries would have started, they would have started incurring power bills, et cetera, et cetera, but they'll not be able to manufacture because the access to that migrant worker would be uh, perhaps not available. Mm. And so one last point I want to make, which has not been 
uh, which is which perhaps not related to the stimulus package. But I feel that if a very small percentage of budgets would have been spent on testing, 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 making testing ubiquitous, mm. it would have been a game changer. We've done all kinds of things. We've done direct debits. We've put money into Jandhan. We've done, but why, I mean, a country like India, why can't we just make testing ubiquitous? You know, mm. every petrol pump should have testing. Every toll gate should have testing. Rather than getting people to get locked down, just put the put a small percentage of that investment in testing. So mm. I think these are the reasons why uh, you know I am not too excited with the uh, stimulus package, which also has, I think, in my view, a lot of optics. Ashish, everyone talks about liquidity. What should the government do to get the liquidity back? You know, both at the macro level and you know demand in terms of micro level. Yeah, I think the only way Anurag is to pr now produce and manufacture and put the liquidity in the industries, which has not happened. What has really happened is that the industries have been said that, listen, you can now top up your loan, but you it's not interest free or you can delay your loan. And those compounding costs, as I said, are, rather than, you know, wasting resources here and there, put the liquidity back into these industries. They got to manufacture they need to produce they need to buy raw material and people need to buy and people on the other side need to purchase and the migrant worker needs to be pretty part participating in that production <clears throat> then only the liquidity cycle will work hmm. absolutely right uh, coming to harsh binani now harsh uh, four out of ten by mr kashyap he feels that uh, compounding cost for msmes is going to be extremely high nothing for travel and tourism and testing is something which could have been, uh, you know, in fact, the order of the day, because at the end of, uh, uh, you know, they, we all want the economy to be open. Nobody wants to stay home. Uh, liquidity has to be, in fact, uh, you know, uh, something which the government has to work on. What are your thoughts on uh, uh, the stimulus package? And Nash, on top of what, you come from the real estate sector. You yeah. come from managed office services, co-working space, where people have started to work. From. So the impact on you has been a double whammy. So tell us what you are doing and players in your sector are doing, so to say, to get revenues and to make sure that you contribute to the growth of the economy. Sure. Uh, good evening to all the viewers and thank you very much, uh, Vineet and Dr. Batra, for uh, having me on the show. <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, obviously, these are several questions which I'll just try addressing through the opening remarks. Uh, the stimulus package announced by the government, uh, I would probably, you know, not be as critical. Uh, it is very high on intent, and I would perhaps rate it closer to, you know, seven. Uh, but as rightly pointed out, you know, the problem of uh, the stimulus package is that obviously it is very high on intent. It focuses to a great extent on longer term structural measures. Uh, but the problem really in India has always been a problem of transmission. The on-ground implementation that we expect uh, in terms of intent versus what it is on ground, there is oftentimes a lot of gap. Uh, and India, what it really needs at this point of time, post the lockdown, is really image transmission because the challenge that the country faces today is really a large demand contraction that has happened. Uh, and, you know, obviously, we at SmartWorks is one of the largest managed office space players, which is a combination of real estate plus services combined. Uh, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Patra, I've obviously faced a situation of a double whammy. Because obviously, you know, it is known that the economy was already starting to slow down well before the COVID. Uh, and the numbers of the GDP, which have recently been announced, uh, hypothesize the same. Uh, but what really has happened in the last couple of months is a problem of massive uncertainty. The demand contraction was already starting to happen. Uh, but the government could have obviously, you know, and government is obviously on the ground trying to push a lot. But what we really need at this point of time is massive stimulus where people start taking decisions. Uh, there has been a lot of unprecedented liquidity in the banking systems. But if you ask the animal spirits of entrepreneurs, has the animal spirits of the industry gone up? The answer would likely be a resounding no, because people are just fearing taking decisions. And, you know, we to a great extent were in it because we have a lot of large enterprises and corporates as our clients. And while the receivables from them have been flowing in at a very steady pace, but what we know over the next three to six months, they're definitely 
is going to be a contraction in the overall economy. People will defer decisions as long as possible. And in between, you have a situation where there's a lot of liquidity in the market, but the liquidity is going nowhere. It's not really leading to more decisions. It's not leading to increased demand. And you have a bunch of great ideas on ground, uh, but the implementation remains to be seen. Hmm. Ash, we'll come back to you what you can do and what all the other players can do to contribute to the growth of the economy. At this point, let's get in Mr. Sudhakar Rao. Mr. Sudhakar Rao, you represent a very big university here. Uh, and uh, education itself found mention in the package. Uh, tell us how technology and education is going to contribute to growth of India's GDP through skilling. Uh, uh, good evening to everyone and uh, thank you Vinit and uh, Mr. Anurag Batra for having me here on NewsX. Um, I would also like to respond to the earlier question briefly, sentimentally, and then get into what Mr. Batra has asked me about. Uh, I am also on, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 closer to 5 or little less than 5. We are judged so much not by our intentions but by our actions and therefore uh, the government has uh, fallen short on that. Initially, it was good, but when it came to the stimulus package and the grandstanding announcement and the subsequent detailing, I think that's where the huge uh, 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 trough of expectations happened. And therefore, I'm, I'm around five. And even if you take one particular sector of uh, MSME, where the recent survey of uh, AIMO says that close to 40% are beyond recovery. I mean, they are suffered in the last... Uh, 60 days, 65 days, no doubt about it. But I think these signals were there even before. The pre-COVID GDP growth of 3.1% should have actually startled all of us and enough measures should have been initiated. Now, an intent uh, as recently as a week or 10 days back, uh, justifying a recovery process and, uh, and trying to see everything in positive state is actually wrong. In my view, in times of crisis, the last man who's standing in the queue should be first saved. I think in this case, the construction workers or the interstate workers, as I would like to call, what has happened to them? There are no estimates. One estimate of 45 crores of uh, interstate workers, which has several layers of definitions, several categories of uh, uh, explanation, and then there's this lowest estimate of say one crore or six crores and eight crores It's kept on moving up. But I think somewhere in between, even if I reasonably assume it for 20 crores, there is a huge size. And then they are not part of our priority plan. And therefore something is seriously wrong, even in intentions. So that's, that's where I, I give it a, a, a four or five. Now, if I judge it based on who are, uh, that may not be appropriate. We should judge it by those who are worst affected. And therefore I had taken that example. I come back to education. Uh, in, within education, we are, say, 37 crores of students from school, higher education, across various institutions in this country. That's a huge number. Now, schools and colleges are closed. Slowly, on lockdown one has happened. Every sector is opening up, but there is no much talk about education. I think a, a segment as large as 37 crores size of population will have to be looked at and comprehensive thinking has to be applied to it. In my view, uh, the, the suggestions from the government for the protocols when we reopen, how the blended learning, that's where the tech is going to come in, is going to boost it up. Otherwise, our measure of the impact of this lockdown on education and the future generations will definitely, definitely be quite, quite blurred. And we will still be groping in the dark the way we have groped as far as the interstate workers are concerned, is going to be another disaster. I think sooner the regulatory bodies, the government, and everybody concerned within the, within the education industry, both private and public players, have to come together, put together protocols, and we have to open up. The only decision that we have to take here is, are we opening up or are we not opening up? If we were not opening up, there is no question of any discussion. Only there is a discussion when we decide to open it up. It could be August, it could be December. But then clarity has to be there. We need to build the parental confidence among the uh, uh, among the, the population to send their children to schools and colleges, and that's how it will be built up. Thank you, Sudhakar. Chandni, right. you represent the manufacturer. You have to unmute yourself. 
You yes. represent the manufacturing sector. You manufacture LED lights. Yes. Now, tell us, is the demand back? Is are your customers kind of asking for LED lights? How has it impacted the supply chain? And how what is your response to the economic stimulus? Uh, thank you for having me on this panel, Anurag. Um, I would like to say that a country as big as India and as diverse as India. Uh, it can never be enough for the government to give and satisfy everybody. And secondly, I think uh, we are all uh, such entrepreneurial uh, people in nature, the Indians, that we have never really relied on the government to give us anything. So why are we relying on the government now? I think that it's a very important thing. So I believe that uh, the stimulus uh, has been given. It's I think it's more important for the uh, maybe the marginal people. to be able to you know utilize this and just survive but as far as the other uh, uh, you know overall economy is concerned i think the focus should be on demand generation how can we improve the customer confidence so that they can come out and buy products in the market not market online or whichever which way because one has to remember what is the, the you can they say uh, the biggest advantage india has it has a very large population and what it translates to is a large number of consumers now what, now now the consumers are there in india but, but who is getting the benefit for this large demand not us not the indian manufacturer this large consumer set is buying products which are made not in india but elsewhere obviously it's a one would say that the large products are number of products are coming from china you know the toy industry even for my matter our industry we are uh, you know continuously in the last 7 uh, 8 years especially since the led uh, this the electronic manufacturing uh, has come into place you know the industry is finding it very hard to find its you know ground because of the constant import from chinese uh, you know fr- from the of the chinese products so one has to remember that if we can get our demand from our indian customers and we can service it i don't think we need any stimulus we will survive we will be very very happy you know one we have spent crores and crores in setting up large manufacturing plants you know and uh, automating our plants getting the you know whole uh, manufacturing <coughs> lab labor everything in place but <laughs> when it comes to selling the products we are not able to get a price because we are const- the, 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 product, the market is constantly infiltrated by these low cost products and one cannot compare the working conditions in india and china they are very different the costs are different but india is catching up but please provide us some fair ground so i think if we can get the demand back to us for example just yesterday i wanted to buy a you know a mobile uh, backup like a battery backup and when i was looking through one of the e-commerce sites i said you know okay i want to buy a one made in india but there was no option there was i wanted actually the site to have a tick option made in india i think so many people will uh, buy uh, uh, that product but if we if we can if the government wants to help revive the economy first it needs to give the demand which is inherent in the economy we are the right. orders so chani is saying that demand revival is key to everything if the exactly. demand revival is there we don't need socks from the government exactly. that's in this uh, what chani is saying yes we see we do not want to increase our loans <laughs> thank But you let me, let me let me also get mr rana barua and mr mr barua your thoughts your opening thoughts on the stimulus package do you think it's it's extremely high on intent but perhaps negligible on content so uh, you know naturally it's uh, going to be a very very debatable one and a subjective one but i'll come from more from the the sector that you know we look from the media advertising and entertainment sector and naturally the advantage that probably we have is that we probably interact with clients of various sites uh, you know uh, countries different categories everything and if you look at the group uh you know we have from various department i think you know we're getting a lot of mixed reports so so i will i will not be able to so it's not a personal point of view that i'll put on the table i'll probably have a collective uh, point of view any large clients small clients medium size client i think yes uh, you know so i would say that somewhere it's a split between what 
Ashish said and what you know we're trying to definitely push from Chandni's trying to say that you know it could have been better but I think you know like what like we've always seen that you know we are not sure whether uh, anything more could have been better or even that would have been subjective so from the sector that we come in and the advertising media sector I think for us it was more important that we get demand back and for us it was that you know if the lockdown I would say that if the lockdown was not necessarily such a prolonged one, uh, whether it was a you know a, a one which completely shut down the economy, that is something which was most subjective in our conversations with a lot of our clients who are into services, manufacturing, who are into goods, who are into providing of many many things. We've got hotel clients, we've got restaurant clients, we've got very strong essential clients, we've got uh, you know people who make sanitizers, we've got uh, you know people who make cars in our things. So I think everybody was kind of frustrated about the fact that you know if the if the lockdown was a more controlled and a tighter one and a closer one, you know probably the conversations could have been a bit more better. I think it was too long is something with the conversation we have picked up every now and then because what has now happened is that with this kind of a long lengthy you know we were doing a very bad back calculation and even if you look at a 60 days plus kind of a lockdown for our Indian economy, for the kind of population that we have and all the you know news and stories and horrific conversations we have, we're still unclear of the opening up. Even when we are talking about opening up today, so while a lot of us are saying that we are going back to work, a lot of us saying that you know the plants have started opening up, but everywhere we are getting very very strong mixed reports about you know whether the demand is going to come back. How are we going to sell the system? Will I be allowed to open restaurants? Will I be allowed to fly if I have to move into this? Can I go to a shop? There are just way too many questions. So even though fears have allayed and the you know a lot of conversations you know so our industry is naturally completely client based. Uh, you know it's a it's media, it's entertainment, it's advertising, it's communication. And if our clients are not going to see demand, if the clients are not going to feel comfortable with the consumers and people coming out into the market, you know, it gets very, very, very tough for us. So just to keep it in a more, you know, in a more, I won't call it that, you know, I won't give it a very strong rating or something. I would just say that if the lockdown was a bit more tighter and not such a lengthy long lockdown, I think our conversations could have been a bit more different. I don't know whether it would have been positive or it would have been dramatically negative. But I think, you know, a lot of us and a lot of our clients and a lot of manufacturers and providers would have been in a better position right now to shape in and shape out the kind of stuff we wanted to do. Because now we are literally trying to, we are literally struggling. We're trying to figure out how to get things moving, how to start selling things. Yes, money is back. If you ask me that, are people trying to spend money back in media and all? Slowly, yes, they, it is coming back. Slowly, we are seeing that mediums like digital has picked up. We are seeing mediums like television coming back. We are seeing a lot of other conversations happening about launches coming back, virtual conversations about virtual launches. You are aware that a lot of money has uh, been put into news channels, which has become quite a big conversation for everybody. But, you know, if you look at the overall sentiment of the nation there is a lot of question marks now that is the big answer which i don't think you know a single rana barua is essentially saying that get the sentiment to be positive yeah if sentiment improves everything else will follow that's at least, really at least possibly it what starts, it starts moving it starts moving i don't think yeah. we, our sentiment is still moving you know i'm not seeing honestly i'm not seeing a sentiment uh, move yet in spite of all opening up and all yeah Dr. Ashwini Sharma, let me come to you, sir. We have spoken to everyone. We have taken, uh, uh, you know, an assessment of what they feel about the stimulus package. What's your take? Namaste. Thanks for having me on the dais with well-known panelists and also for selecting the topic which is very much relevant and in demand, especially among youth, students and policymakers. And I think uh, this is a demand of time where we have to go for a brainstorming. To all of us, COVID is a pandemic situation like 2008, where we have global economy and financial meltdown. But this issue is totally different from the year 2008. Because this time we don't know how long it will continue and till what will be the remedy or solution for this. Because we all, all have been trying hit and trial going by number of options. But I personally feel that uh, this can become a blessing in disguise or education sector 
I am presently working. I feel so because I think definitely this is a sector which is linked to the social sector. We are giving grading on the stimulus given by the government of India is very difficult. But very important is that we have to implement the policies which is very slow in the whole system because we have to plan out the policy as uh, Sudhakar Rao said very correctly that we have to take a decision how schools, colleges, education system will be again in place, what will be the policy. And I personally feel that those who are making the policy must have a field experience. That is very important. Now, the concept has changed. That is learning to people rather than people to learning. That is what is happening basically. So we have to work out a system because we know that India is ranked among, among 129 out of 189 countries on the 219 human uh, index. Uh, similarly, if we see the population of our 500 million in the is there in the age bracket of 18, 15, 5 to 24. So now there is a huge potential in the education sector. But basically, how it will be planned out, how we are going to use the technology, what is the policy, whether the mindset which is existing for last 100 years in the education is, they are going to change whether the institutional bodies who are monitoring the education system, they are going, they are open for the idea or not. That's the main thing because see, parents are very much aware and very much worried about the kids. They are not ready to send kids to school because if you see the education system, we have got a student up to fifth class, then again from sixth to eighth class and the student who is less than the five, uh, fifth class, he is not able to basically operate from the laptops or computers in case we are going for the online education system. So we have to work out that how things are going to change. And then basically what happened is that uh, Apex education bodies suddenly have given a guide to close the 1,000 universities, 40,000 colleges, and more than 50 like schools temporarily. Now what is happening is we have not decided how they will open up. That's the main issue which we have to work out. Then what is happening is these measures have been varying degrees of impact on around 3 percent seven five crore students and almost on 14 lakhs faculty also because they are two players they are the two stakeholders the students and the teachers so both are in uh, uh, dilemma what will happen how things will happen because the guidelines have to change now this so, has transformed so, the so mr sharma we'll come back to you on how education uh, is keeping pace with technology and the changes coming in education for now we'll get arna mitra arna uh, uh, one of the collateral of lockdown has been uh, digital transformation of businesses. Will India be able to grow its GDP using technology in a bigger way? Are you happy with the economic stimulus? Uh, thank you, Anurag. Thank you, Vineet, for having me on the show. Um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk. I think uh, I'll just take two of these, both these questions together, Anurag. Um, first part is that whether we are discussing whether we're happy with the stimulus or not, I think we need to first understand whether could we have possibly done anything better. Our last year's tax collection was about 20 lakh crore, and I think government couldn't have possibly given anything more than that. So, so whether we liked or not, government couldn't have done anything better. That's point number one. Um, second is that why is it that you know should we be happy with what we're getting? I think this is a time for people to have a little philanthropic approach beyond their own businesses. Maybe people can do a little more. Everybody can do a little more, and and probably help somebody who's a little you know, poor, little, uh, you know, uh, not as lucky as, you know, the other person is. And therefore, they could possibly do a little bit together. And and honestly, to answer the digital digital part of the question, I think uh, COVID-19 situation and uh, hand on heart, I don't uh, uh, wish to commit it this way, but but I think it is going to help the digitization of the country in a, in a long way. A uh, lot of, uh, I think India was stuck with its, uh, inertia, you know, more than anything else of not wanting to change of the society who decided not to change and they keep on referring about policies, the changes that people would bring. But the point is we have to bring the changes ourselves and we didn't do it. So COVID-19 has possibly forced us to believe in, you know, uh, working in a certain way, which possibly happened long back. So, so I think B2B businesses, B2C businesses, um, they have to now uh, adapt to digital uh, technologies which they've been pushing for a very, very long time. And uh, I see a complete upside to that. I think Zoom's share, you know, 3x more than the all top five airlines in the world just possibly proves that uh, hypothesis. But um, 
having said that i think what is important i completely agree with chan point of view i think the government needs to work on creating demand generation luckily we have got 1.37 billion people enough demand in the country itself um we can create zooms or own uh, googles own skypes and everything possible and we have got the technology we have got the right people who are doing it for those companies somewhere else i should create a policy and ensure that these people essentially you know end up having the money to develop the right kind of uh, policies so whatever money was given i think we should have done anything better than that and this is going to help us to truly become a digital india and uh, i think this will also show people the way that you know there is a little more that we can push ourselves than somebody less you know uh, who's a lesser less unfortunate than who we are so those are my points quickly thank you arnab rana you know we need to ask you about the initial comment i'd like to when you talk to your clients uh what do you was one or two anecdotes when clients tell you why they are on pause you already said the sentiment needs to come back circulation needs to come back but tell us what you know the brands that you work with what are they thinking so no so you know it's naturally it's like uh, it's a interesting question more so because like i said that you know you on a given day or let's say the last 82 days is what we counted is the lockdown we faced some of us uh, at least in bombay and you know a lot of clients i think the biggest challenge that i would say that so let's put the clients into essential and non essential the way the government has done it so it's easier to speak this language because for us it's very challenging to understand what is essential and what is non essential right so is a car essential or a non essential is led essential non essential because you know today i just read a article which i've been saying for a long time that the biggest challenge that a lot of us are going to face is the repair of so called not essentials like toasters acs tvs phones everything and people are saying you know because everybody is coming out of a lockdown and suddenly you realize all your basic basic things have been all clamped so what are the clients saying so essential clients are saying like they are understanding that yes this is a great run for them so for example health whether it's hygiene whether it's anything to medical services anything around education anything which kind of fits into is of course you know they have done necessary things conversations trying to engage with their consumers selling stuff they've latched on to any e-commerce model they've tried to figure out how to get things moving and all but i think the bigger challenge anurag has been with the so called spenders if i remove the fmcgs and i remove the essentials we have a massive entry of we had startups we had so many new services which were coming on board we had so many so many new conversations which you are aware of we had uh, you know media we had entertainment we had uh, experiential marketing you know just to give you an idea you'll be you'll be you know amazed one entire industry which is called events and activation has come to a standstill zero complete zero there's nothing because how will that industry move they're, forward they're waiting and watching and there is a pause yeah it's like one big pause now so what are the clients saying so the clients are actually and and talking about let's say a very decently large size client is going to say that okay i will go with the sentiment of the nation and now be absolutely straight forward and service the consumer because the consumer needs me i'm not going to act very smart i'm not going to act very uh, cocky or i'm not going to do and here is a complete set of clients who are just sitting and thinking okay lockdown is opening but how does how do i reach out because Understood. i don't know whether you know white goods summers are gone you know you know we have a very large white goods company they're saying uh, is the monsoon going to be delayed is it going to be can i can i sell more acs can i sell more fridges what happens now because i've probably so, lost a seat ashish so, if ashish if you were to look at you know you're a personal money you know fintech company tell us in numbers give us a sense of how bad it is with numbers so if pre covid it was 100 where were we in june and where are we likely to be say 90 days from now give us uh, some data that kind of illustrates your points no so i think uh, uh, anurag uh, you know if i were to look at the data from our application yes one of the core things our application does is to asset reallocate people so essentially what we've seen is a massive surge in may we grew five times what we grew versus april because suddenly now users had a digital uh, access point to manage their money which is across the place whether it's loans or whether it is uh, you know investments so from uh, asset allocation point of view a lot of money has gone uh, and moved uh, you know from equity to gold to uh, rbi bonds to arbitrage funds basically safe havens 
So a lot of smart people have made that movement. In fact, since the time we launched, given that it's a machine learning driven system, we were actually uh, automatically alerting consumers of the Franklin de debacle. A lot of consumers actually redeemed much before and saved hundreds of crores because what the application does is it mitigates risks. So we've actually seen amazing traction because we're not a we're not a stock broker. We're not a we're not a trading system. We are a we are a super money app for people's loans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One thing which we have seen, uh, we recently launched the lending application. We saw that that absolutely got hit because of the lockdown. Lending just froze because we lend via third party banks, but it's now just beginning to uh, you know take off. So from a sector point of view, a category such as our business actually, uh, Touchwood was not impacted. And for me to say that, listen, we were we were ten and we became two, uh, you know, it was actually the other way around because all the offline these were existing portfolio that you were helping balance. So hence, possibly they didn't get and even and right. even and even honestly, a lot of money which has moved from let's say somebody who's on a on a category B kind of a bank that kind of money coming into a platform like ours for a safer haven. Somebody who's on a fixed deposit, but or, or or basically exposed to something which is double A rated or a single A rated, has come to the safe haven, right? Because as a digital platform, our job is to preserve people's money. So we've actually seen a lot of surge. Actually, May was the best month for us, but it's a wrong barometer because we are just, you know, this is my new startup, uh, hardly a year old. Uh, I think in general, uh, uh, obviously there was huge amount of redemption in the equity markets. Uh, we've seen uh, lots of people being very, very skeptical. I think this whole concept of mutual fund sahi here because of all the Franklin debacle has caused a lot of strain amongst people to trust a lot of such instruments. Uh, you know, some of it will kind of unfold. My personal view is that, listen, in a market like India, we got to unbundle. We got to bring bonds to the table. We want to bring simple stuff like fixed deposits gold bonds, government instruments to the table, so that it becomes simple and transparent. So yeah, I, I, you're I, saying I, that the government has to spend its way out of the current situations to get the economy back. I think yeah. that's what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Rao, uh, you know, admissions are a good barometer of how the economy is doing. Has been there any impact on your admissions this year? Uh, and tell us, generally, has been there an impact? And I'll ask the same question to Dr. Sharma. Has been there an impact on your admissions? Uh, what is the give us a story from the numbers? If you were to take in May 100 students, have you taken 100 students? And overall, did you have to, you know, from an overall application uh, pool, how did the numbers move? Mr. Rao first, yeah, and then Mr. Sharma. Uh, I, I would like to tell you about the ICFI group. We have ICFI business schools for which we have conducted entrance examination and uh, interviews and selection processes way back in the month of uh, Feb. And uh, we had given admission offers and they have accepted and paid the fees and joined. So about uh, roughly about uh, 10,000 students uh, in our system are currently uh, going through regular online uh, courses as per their uh, timetable. So that's taken care of. Now the undergrad courses where we run uh, across ICFA universities, we have about 11 universities. Uh, these programs have got their admission calendar generally from the month of, say, April to June. So that's got a little postponed because of this lockdown. And uh, what was taken care of before March was good, probably with even others also. But with respect to majority of universities which have undergrad programs and postgrad programs that peak up only after, uh, say, June, July, uh, or sorry, after May, they have actually uh, uh, taken a kind of postponement. So it is true to us and true to others as well that please add another 60 days and then things should be normal. But I feel uh, this is uh, without any estimate which I'm saying, but uh, uh, looking at the number of applications that are uh, being received by various universities, uh, that is actually as low as, uh, I mean, it has gone down by 40%, 30 to 40% at least. Uh, this is an average. Some of them have actually gone, uh, taken a hit of 70%. Now, the students who are actually residing in certain locations are not uh, showing the propensity to move towards another location. For example, somebody who's residing in 
Jaipur or Rajasthan is not willing to go to say Maharashtra. Somebody who is uh, living in Karnataka may not uh, like to go to Delhi to study. I think that is no. an important uh, metric for us to look at. And the third and the most important thing is the debate of the value of education will come up only in such times of crisis. Supposing you run online courses, the parents and the stakeholders will come up with a debate saying, you probably must be spending little less, so why should we pay the same fees as you were charging earlier? Well, that has to be handled very differently and it can be handled. But then these, these are three important trends that we see within our, uh, within our education system, especially in the higher education sector. Even in the... Sarma, give us a sense of your admission number. Uh, what he said is basically seems to be applicable to all the higher education institutes, definitely, because we are also running a institute of management in Bangalore in the name of IFIM. There we have got around 1,500 students, all classes, everything going online for them. But for the new admission, definitely we are conducting webinars, trying to educate to the student. And definitely the students who are staying in, let's say, Northeast area, they are finding it difficult to move to the Bangalore or maybe to the uh, uh, Bombay. On the university part, which is basically the admission starts in the month of April, May, since the lockdown came before that, we are in the process of going for educating the students, collecting the data, making webinars, teaching them all uh, possible combinations. But uh, definitely we have a fear and feel that there may be some cut on the number of admissions this time. But it is possible those who are going through the use of technology, they will definitely be able to deliver the best. And this is what we are doing. Basically, we are trying to use Technology for delivery of the admissions, delivery of uh, uh, placements, delivery of counseling, everything. And even we are conducting the convocation also through our online system. So I think that is there. Now the mindset of the teachers, I mean the students and the parents, because we have been working on old century system that is... Understood. Uh, I, I think we are not talking just about education, we are talking about economy. So yeah. I'll, uh, Vineet, why don't you get uh, yeah. Arsh, fact, Arnav and Changni? In fact, I had a question for uh, Chandani. Chandani, you spoke of uh, you know going to uh, you know the internet and online, and you were looking for a battery backup, and you could not find a single one which was made in India. At the same time, you know, I always ask this question on the show. There is a lot of focus uh, towards Atma Nirbharta. How how will these two mix? Right now, it seems like chalk and cheese. They'll never mix. Honestly. Uh, government announced a package for electronic manufacturing, you know, a $6.75 billion plan in which over the next five years, they want the electronic manufacturing to move to India. In fact, they've given production linked incentives for mobiles and components so that for that to happen. But, you know, again, we are in a very initial phase. It has just been launched and one has to remember so in some manner, you know, unless we kind of just put a stop to the imports, you know, we will find our footing. People will be, you know, what happened to all the mobile phones, the car, you know, the companies which were making in India, they had to shut down because even plants which were set up in 2012, 2014, 2014 by 2017, they shut down because they were not able to keep pace with the technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it is important that the electronic manufacturing will develop you know, if there is, if we are able to meet the demand at a maybe a higher cost right now, let customers pay 200 rupees extra right now, so that the you know when the government says that we should become an export hub, we have to export to all countries of the world. Hello, what about India? You know, we are not even fulfilling our own demand, let alone being uh, able to export to others. Mm -hmm. So, I think the government is on the right path. But uh, somewhere, uh, you know, the plans are announced, but uh, they just get derailed. I think it's, it's been a good initiative. Samsung has set up a very large mobile manufacturing plant in India. And yeah. uh, in our industry too, like in Compact, we have set up a very large plant over 6,000 uh, square feet of uh, 60,000 square feet of space where we are just doing a completely automated manufacturing. But again, you know, again, these are unprecedented times. It is difficult. But as Mr. Modi himself said, this is the time to just start afresh and, uh, you know, just get our own, uh, to find our own feet, we have to find our customers. Yeah. Right, absolutely. You know, but, but the problem with that statement, Jani, is that you don't know when the end is going to happen. In fact, let me rope in Arnab. 
Anup, you know, let me pick up from what uh, you know, Mr. Sharma said earlier on that you know the difference between 2008 and this crisis is that you really don't know when this one is going to end. It's it's a Byzantine mystery. How is the government going to wrap its head around that? Because obviously, if you plan something, you have a timeline in mind. Yeah, that's right. In fact, I think we made a mistake about 82 days back when we thought that it's going to end at a certain point in time. Yeah. I think we actually had about 60 odd days to learn from what has happened in China or just Wuhan or even in Italy for that matter. Uh, we had to learn that this is not going to end. I think even today and what I feel from this panel, somewhere there's a deep-seated feeling that this is going to end and something is going to change. I think we have to accept that it's not going to change and we have to live with it. And the moment we accept it, I think that's the first step for a beautiful new normal. You know, in advertising and Rana would know about this. We've been using this term new normal for a very long time, which is the most searched keyword across the globe for the last 60 odd days. But advertising has bought it for a very long time. And, and it is the fact that, you know, every time you have to be ready to make a change. And this change is this, that, you know, I think the entire uh, point that Chandni also mentioned, I think somewhere it's, it's a complete lip service as yet that, you know, we talk about policies and then we talk about, you know, how Indian companies need to uh, do certain things. But the fact is we have still not been able to make a single brand go global from India. We don't have a single FMCG company. We don't have a single company where the entrepreneur thought that, you know what, I want to make equivalent to Apple. But Steve Jobs thought, why couldn't uh, some some bit somebody thought you know thought that in India, right? So the the point is this that I think it is also we we hail from a poor background. We we don't we actually start you know kind of coding for ourselves, and it's going to change. I think it is changing with a lot of young entrepreneurs, and I still consider myself young. But I'm saying we have a lot of entrepreneurs coming up, you know, from the country who who is wanting to change it. I think the government has to believe in them and give the money that they can do a little bit of extra than what others could possibly have done in the no, past. No, if I could just, yeah. just yes. even ask, and Ashish, you know, why does the support from the government, entrepreneurs have the creativity and the resilience to be able to build something, are we able to do that? From Harsh and Arnav and Ashish. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll leave Harsh to come in first. Harsh? Uh, you know, entrepreneurs have always thrived uh, in creating new opportunities. And I would like to, you know, agree that while the government can be a great enabler in facilitating a lot of policies which can be startup friendly. In fact, in all the policies that government has actually ushered in, uh, there isn't any mention as much of startups as much there is a mention of MSME. But however, having said that, uh, COVID-19 has led to emergence of a no lot of new business opportunities and models, uh, which if we truly were to you know, take advantage of, it would require a massive mindset shift and if you talk about particularly our sector, right, the real estate sector, while it has several sub-segments, warehousing, residential, commercial, but I can more specifically talk about uh, the COVID, uh, the commercial office space segment, where the entire co-working space, which until now was perhaps just 3 to 4% of the overall commercial office space segment, which until last year was doing extremely well. There was a record absorption of more than 65 million square foot. Here is an opportunity. Here is a black swan moment where what we are starting to hear from the industry in the last 45 odd days, our inquiries have shot up by more than 50%. Because what we've really seen as the emergence of new opportunities is that a lot of customers want new flexible spaces. No one really wants to commit to long leases. Uh, there has been the emergence of new layouts. Social distancing earlier required you to sort of, you know, have close to about 100 square foot which in the last few years has dwindled to about 50 square foot. Now that has quadrupled. A lot of companies are now coming and saying that they want decentralization of operations to enable business continuity. So we need to take a step back because while the government can only do so much in a highly populous country and all of us are aware of all the fiscal constraints that the government has, we need to also step up uh, to see what are the new business opportunities we can take advantage of. While there is no denying that after the COVID-19, a lot of smaller fringe players will fold up. It will be a survival of the fittest. But having said that, it is really the time for us to step up. And it's also an earnest request to all the larger corporates to really look at a lot of homegrown brands. Because at the end of the day, we as customers can decide what we want to use. Sure. There will be a plethora of options. 
Do you want to kind of do a reverse countdown? Now, me and Vinay would want to comment from each one of you on where would the Indian economy be in 90 days? Quick yeah. comment, you know, short, quick comment. We could start with you, Dr. Sharma. Where will the Indian economy be in 90 days from now? See, I think that uh, it will grow up like anything because now everyone, everyone is very clear that we have to leave this with this agency situation only. And I think slowly, slowly we will be. Going for in-house products and especially in the education sector, there is a lot of potential. So things will start, especially for the edutech companies. This will grow. So, Dr. Sharma, you said that edutech companies will be at the forefront. But I'm looking for a larger comment on the economy. If the demand is at 10 percent, where would be where would be circulation of money? Chandni, uh, your comment on where the Indian economy will be 90 days from now? I think if we can leave up. Indian economy is going to zoom up because we have a very large young workforce which unaffected by this whole uh, corona virus and if we can just separate the workforce and just have the people from 20 to 50 work then we would be looking at an, an you know an unprecedented situation again of a V shaped recovery Rana Barua Indian economy 90 days from now so will I... your client be spending almost 100% of what they were doing in no. say fair per jab No, that I think no, 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 no. So I don't want to also be a doomsday thing. No, the clients won't be spending. I think like I will, I will just hold the same conversation. That I think we just stretched our uh, just by a month too much, and uh, so I don't see a turnaround in the next ninety days. I think as a as the entire industry, all of us have kind of uh, you know we are speaking in a very unified way that we probably see a bit of a revitalization happening from the season. Maybe October, November, December will be better, but no, not June, July, August. We'll we'll be still struggling because we'll still be trying to figure out how to battle the virus and everything. So Thank not just for the last. Quick Ar- comment: Arnab, Indian economy in 90 days. We That's still the same. Struggling. We can still do the same show and discuss the same topic. It will be the same place. I think it's a huge change of mindset that's needed, and uh, I don't want to sound overly positive or negative either. I'm seeing it for a long time. We need to make changes to ourselves, Anurag. Okay. I'm not seeing it happening anytime soon. All right. Okay. All right. No, absolutely. I don't see any dramatic change in the next 90 days. Uh, there isn't any vaccine, or things aren't going to open up as soon. Uh, but if we were to facilitate a mindset shift, I do see a lot of new opportunities emerge, and it definitely is going to be a slow, painful recovery. But when it does happen, it's going to be very quick. But definitely not in the next ninety days. Okay, Mr. Sudhakar Rao. Yeah, in the next ninety days, uh, it's going to be negative growth. Uh, I think that is very realistic, and we should be prepared for that. Uh, by the time we talk next, I think forty percent of the MSMEs would be vanished, and that's very very grim. <clears throat> Thank you. Last but not the least, Ashish, we started the show with you. Your final comment: Will we see the credit of take go back to its? All numbers will we see the sentiment come back? Where will be the Indian economy 90 days from now? Yeah, I think uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we will see negative growth. I agree with some of the participants in this panel, uh, but I my sense is that in 365 days the situation would be good because we would have adapted. All right. On that note, thank you everyone for being a part of this wonderful show. Ashish, Mr. Banani, Mr. Rao, Barwa. Mr. Barwa, uh, Chandni, um, uh, Dr. Arvind Sharma, uh, Mr. Mitra, and Anurag, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, platform. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.